Hi, hi, it's Toby here, the so-called artist, and I'm kind of excited about this video because I've been waiting to do this for a while. Okay, so this is my current sketchbook. It's been like, not just my fave, but it absolutely is my current sketchbook because I've only really been drawing in this book. I've, I've decorated it with stickers and everything, and I'm coming to a problem I've never really experienced before, so a little bit of a backstory, some lore. I've only ever finished one sketchbook in my entire life. Like all of my drawings and stuff, I've only ever finished one other book. And I did lose that book when I moved a bunch, so I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. So this book, I've been drawing in it and I've put like a bookmark. So this is the indicator of the halfway mark, and I'm nearly there, which is really exciting for me because I'm going to complete this book, and it's, I'm really happy about that. But on to the point of this video. If you've read the title, then you would already know that um, we're going to be drawing the first page. Technically, it's not the first page. Technically, it's the cover page. And this brand is called Art Creations, so the cover and everything is the same color as the actual pages. And I want to complete this spread before it's too late because as I draw more, it's starting to warp and bend and it's getting this little, this little bump that I'm worried is going to be difficult to draw over. So, I want to do a spread here to just introduce people to the book because I have been uh, drawing plenty and scrapbooking and I'm going to keep doing that but I want to fill this up before it gets too late. So I'm going to head over to or well send you guys over to voiceover Toby as I do my sketch process. Hello hello it's Toby here or well voiceover Toby here coming at you with the not so live commentary of my art process. So starting off with sketching, the pencil I'm using is the Fabric Castell Jumbo Pencil and the pressure of HB, or at least, um, it's not pressure, it's, I forget the, what to actually call it, but it's an HB pencil. And right now I'm just drawing like a full body perspective pose. So that's why I did those, those weird like, three lines that go downward, that's my perspective lines that I'm using to just kind of place out things in a way that looks like a forced perspective. I do go back and forth with like the pose a little bit, mostly because I didn't know like what elements to have up front, what to have like behind, but I do get a pretty good grasp on what it is I wanted to do. The whole feeling that I want this page or this spread to have is like those Y2K fashion magazines where they're like collages and there's a bunch of images all over so that's the vibe I'm going for. I am sorry that some of the recording the camera didn't focus so it's going to be a little blurry here and there. I'll try to fix it where I can and well getting back into the drawing you can kind of see me doing like half of a heart hand for this sketch because that's been like something I just do in my videos now both uh when recording and when not recording I find myself making little heart hands unironically in my day-to-day -day. so uh that's been a great development and this is just you know I wanted to do like a cute face pose or a, a cute pose that you know shows off their face a lot I wanted to do like both hands up but I do change it later on. Spoiler, the way you see the sketches posed now, they're going to change. And that little pop of color you see in the bottom is just me marking out where I want like the squares or the... You know what? Let me zoom out. So I want this to have, as I mentioned before, a Y2K magazine aesthetic. So there's going to be little squares and pop-ups here and there. And so... That little clear package that you guys saw is um, journal stencils. So these are things I use with like, like bullet journaling, but I use it in my sketchbook a lot to do little fun shapes here and there. So I'm going to just gently sketch some squares around the whole book and everything. 
I do start with a general outline for the whole page, just so I can box everything in and have a good mental graph of where to put everything. I usually do, like, on my pink ruler that you guys see me using, it's like one square distance from the corner of the page, and then in the middle it's a one square difference between both pages, so it's half a square on one side, half a square on the other, and then I split it down the middle. I did round the corners a bit in my sketch, but I don't remember if I rem if I actually rounded the corners or if I just made them straight when I was coloring or doing my line art. So that'll be fun to keep an eye out for later. Do I keep the corners rounded or not? These don't all stay. I do like take some squares away, put some additional things here and there, but I just wanted to get like a a simple layout for what, you know, little uh, sticker placements or I want I keep wanting to say accessories to the page but it's not accessories but you know in my mind I like to accessorize my artwork because it's like fashion so I'm just accessorizing the page with little pop-ups and squares and little details here and there I do a lot of erasing in my like finished products or finished illustrations so this is just me going back to do my quote-unquote second sketch of the body i am drawing my sonic character or like my sonic sona i really really like drawing sonic characters like it's been something i did since i was younger and my sketchbooks are full of them so i just wanted to draw like my current iteration of how i draw myself as a sonic character they're a black fox because I like the color black and I really like foxes, so that's what they are. There's not much to say about this early process because I just kind of go for it when I'm sketching. So, you know, give them their little nose, their ears. I draw their hairline in because, I, you know, Sonic characters, some of them have some forehead for days. So I really do have to make sure I mark the hairline early so I can know where to put their bangs, their side bangs, or where to start having the hair flow from the quote-unquote center of the head. But once I, you know, get in my groove, it's pretty easy to just sketch everything out. I know what my character looks like. I also keep like a little reference of them nearby so that I can, you know, look at it and then look at my page and be like, okay, this is what that looks like. Here in the second sketch, this is where I decided that I'm only going to have one hand be up. Just because I wanted to have it, like, not be so crowded around the face because I realized that with the hair and the bangs and then whatever background elements I choose to do, it's going to get really crowded in that corner. And I wanted it to have some room to breathe, so I decided to drop one of the arms and just have, like, the bangs hang down a little lower, kind of like they're tilting their head over. Little things like that, I feel like, give like a motion to the drawing, like you stopped and took a photo of them while they were in motion. So it's not perfectly symmetrical, things move to the side. I have a lot of sketching to get done. So I'm gonna do that off camera and maybe the line art too, so that I can come back and we can just do the coloring process together. Cause uh, it's gonna take me a minute to get all of this done. So, be right back. Hey, hey, welcome back. Um, it's been a new day. It's been a couple of days in between uh, the last shot and this one. But I have finally had the time to sit down and finish coloring everything. Quick update, uh, the book got bulkier. I've, I've been drawing up a storm still. But I really want to get this done before I go any further because eventually it's going to get almost impossible to draw over the hump that is being created by all of the books spreading out. So, let's get into it. So, starting with the markers that I'm currently using, I've been using the Artex alcohol markers lately. I've genuinely been enjoying them a bit more than my Copics. 
I don't have all the colors. I only have the 90 count set, so there are some colors that I just don't have. So I still use, like, I'm still going to use all of the markers I've collected over the years. That, for sure. I'm using them till I run out. And so having these new markers was just an added bonus. I get more colors that I didn't have before. Like, a lot of grays and, like, pale tone colors were in this set, which I have been desperately missing in my collection. So that's been really good. So going into coloring, uh, since if you couldn't tell from my hands, I am African American, I am black, so whenever I draw a character that is supposed to represent a black character or a person of color, no matter what the species is, I make the palms of their hands or the palms of their feet a lighter color. So since I'm like I'm dark brown in my skin, my palms are going to be a light pale color. So when I draw the character that's supposed to represent me, I make their palms a lighter brown color or a tan color. That's just something I've always done. It makes me happy and it makes it easier for me to recognize that this isn't just a character that is black coated. It is a character that is meant to be black. And that's always been like, a thing that I found to be very important of having representation no matter what the medium is and if you don't like it I will tell you as I tell all of my fans on TikTok and everywhere else you can argue with your mama people are allowed to want to see themselves be represented in all forms of medium and if you don't like it don't look my stance aside uh, the paper that I have does bleed, like it's not alcohol marker proof, there isn't going to be, you know, zero bleeding, there's going to be bleed, so I just have like a piece of cardstock behind one page, and then the page that's on the cover, you're going to see me like flip it up and down every now and then, that's just me checking to make sure that it didn't bleed completely through to the cover. Getting into the hair here, I really like this technique I've been doing these days where the roots I will make them a darker color before the main color of the hair the hair and then I leave white or the page color as the highlight color for the hair and then here's where I do the really cool trick I will take a color that's not represented in the hair so I'm doing pink so I use a purple color I will go underneath the highlight and add that color and then blend it out and it gives this this digital almost feel this glow to the hair that I just like and it adds that volume to hair like there's like there's some sort of secondary lighting that we can't see and this isn't the shading color like you guys are going to see like a darker pink or purple be used for the shading this is just something I do on like hair highlights that I feel absolutely elevates the drawing so if you ever want to like really make the hair color pop choose a high contrast color or like a complementary color to go underneath your highlights and it really makes them pop. You can see here I use like this dark pink magenta color for doing the shading in the hair and that's pretty much it. That's just how I color hair. I'm going to use some video editing magic to do that over on this side. So allow me to... Ta-da! All done! <laughs> Now on to the rest of the drawing. The theme for the outfit that I'm doing is cybercore, or like I call it Y3K instead of Y2K because it's like futuristic but kind of like a throwback kind of nostalgia to it. A lot of the outfits that I use in this I kind of referenced off of Pinterest. So I will try to see, I, I can link my Pinterest board in the description I'll, I'll have it linked there so that people can see like the big fashion board i have it's gonna have a lot of clothing on there because i i use bits and pieces from all kinds of sources to put all together a nice outfit and this uh wrap shirt one piece that i have them wearing is supposed to be holographic so to do that i'll take a purple color and then a pink color and I'll kind of not do like a shadow but it's like I'm making a highlight on the clothing but it's with purple and pink. I'll blend those together and then I take my white jelly roll pen 
and then I'll just outline one corner or one side of it to give it like a metallic glow or like a shine to it. And that's just how I do holographic clothing. It's a new technique that I tried for this illustration, so I'm not sure if it if it reads as well as I think it does. I personally love how it came out. But you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you want to hear more of the inner workings of how I color clothing. I don't have much to say about more of my coloring process, at least for at the moment, so I'm going to let some music play in the background and enjoy. You might have noticed a little bit of a lighting shift. The sun was starting to go down, so I had to turn on my lamp and close the blinds. So it's going to look a little bit more warm toned with everything that I'm doing here. But for this part of the outfit, I'm just, I, it's white in the reference, but I didn't want to leave it just as the color of the paper. So I'm using different grays here to really push the tone of it. And I'm doing a technique that's kind of similar to how I color the hair. I'm adding shades of blue or purple to the shadows of this, of like the clothing and stuff, just to give it like a futuristic kind of glow and to lighten up the shadows so that everything's not completely gray. It gives a little bit more vibrancy to everything. I did mention earlier that I will be referencing or leaving my reference board in the description as a link to pinterest and pretty much the outfit's just all kind of monochromatic with white and blue as like the theme i'm going here a lot of outfits that i see for like cybercore or like cyberpunk it's either a monochromatic outfit of black or white with a lot of highly saturated colors like neon colors or if it's like more white Leaning in the outfit color palette, it'll be a lot of pastel colors. You know, the whole SpongeBob SquarePants, the future is chrome, 
which I get it, although I prefer a more futuristic look of golds and, you know, bronzes, but that's not futuristic, that's more steampunk, as I've learned in my years, so, you know, tick for tack, it's a way of an aesthetic, and so for this page, I had to follow the aesthetic that I picked out. I do touch up on the face here, uh, if you ever see, like, those old retro cartoons when a character would blink and their eyeshadow is like purple so i make the eyeshadow on majority of my characters if they're blinking it's gonna be purple because it's just a little a little callback to that style and that's kind of something that appears a lot like i really like retro art and so when i draw my characters i don't give them five fingers i give them three and a thumb and that's just because in a lot of those retro or rubber hose cartoons, they only give the characters three fingers and a thumb. So that's what I do. I do apologize for how much the video here is going to keep shaking. The position of my camera is something I'm still getting used to. So the camera is in front and whenever I move in my chair, it moves my camera forward. So it's not noticeable if I slowed the video down, but since this video is indeed sped up, it's going to shake a little bit more aggressively than what it usually looks like when I'm recording. But the last piece that I wanted to do over here that's just coloring in the shirt, I didn't know what color to pick, so I picked gray, which granted their fur is like a really dark blackish gray so I tried to leave a lot of highlights on it so that the eyes can tell this is not just their fur this is their shirt and that's pretty much it I add some shadows here and there but the coloring process is pretty much done and after this we're gonna cut to the the final illustration you guys get to see how it looks with all of the background elements done I do apologize I didn't record it I'm really chaotic when I do my scrapbooking kind of techniques and laying down paper and stuff. It's a tedious process. I did have a YouTube video that showed a little bit of that scrapbooking process, but uh, I gotta say my uh, technique has changed and I am no longer, you know, putting things down sparingly. I am, you know, blasting my artwork with stickers and little accessories here and there so i'm gonna let you guys see the finished work and now for the grand reveal <laughs> i really like how all of the stickers and embellishments came out i used uh posca paint for the background and also super glue to glue these beads on I'm not worried about it sticking up because I'm so far into the sketchbook that it, the texture difference isn't going to matter. So I really went ham with adding fun textures to this page. And I can't wait to finish the book. I do have the date that I started the book at the top. I started this back in May on the 10th. And honestly, I'm just in awe. I'm just like, I keep looking at it and looking at all the shimmers and sparkles on the page. But here's to finally finishing this book. I am more than halfway through it. I have like this, this small chunk left and I'm confident that I'm gonna get there. This is going to be the sketchbook that I finish. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more art content and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.